Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join Bailey and I today out here in the vegetable garden. The Lord has provided a beautiful day here in October. You know, we're almost the middle of October. And so, you know, I just love the fall season. You know, it's time to harvest those vegetables for winter storage, you know, like your acorn squash or your butternut squash or your blue hubbard and also your sweet potatoes. And so today I thought we would go harvest some of my Red Jersey sweet potatoes. So thanks for joining Bailey and I today out here in the vegetable garden. So right behind me here is where I planted these Red Jersey sweet potatoes. I ended up buying the sweet potato slips from Ray's Nursery nearby. They were like, if you buy a certain amount, they're 15 cents, otherwise they're 20 cents a piece. And uh, you know, this is the first year I've grown sweet potatoes in our Plant Smart Living garden. And so I'm really looking forward to harvesting these. Uh, I had these, I planted seven slips right behind me uh, of the Red Jersey. And along the other half of the bed, I also planted some yams. And so today I thought we would harvest some of these Red Jersey sweet potatoes and see, see how many potatoes we got from each slip. Now these sweet potatoes, you know, they, they can take anywhere from three months to four months until maturity. You know, the longer they stay in the ground, the, the, the bigger the potatoes are and the, the larger the yield. And uh, so let's... Let's go harvest some of these beautiful and tasty Red Jersey sweet potatoes. But before we harvest those sweet potatoes, these are pictures of the sweet potato slips that I ended up buying from Ray's Nursery nearby. And these slips cost me 15 cents each. So I actually have these sweet potatoes slips planted in the raised bed section right behind the fountain here. And what's interesting is I had some deer come in and they ate all the leaves off my sweet potato vine, which I really allowed them to do. I could have put some fence sections over them, but I thought that with the deer eating my leaves it really saved me a lot of trouble of having to clean up all the leaves. And so in this bed here in the, in the front here is where I have some of the Red Jersey sweet potatoes. And also on the other half is where I have the yams. But also over there in my other raised bed, let's go take a quick look over there. I have some Bure Guard sweet potatoes growing. So when you do grow sweet potatoes, I would encourage you to make sure you have plenty of room for these sweet potato vines to be able to grow and spread out. And this bed right here in front of me, this four foot by eight foot bed, is where I have these Bure Guard sweet potatoes growing. But you can also see that the, the vines came all the way over into this other bed section right here. And so let's just pan around and we'll take a look over there. That's where we're going to start digging up some of these Red Jersey potatoes. These were some of the deer that came in and ate some of the leaves off of my sweet potato vine. And thankfully the deer don't come in and eat that many vegetables in my garden. So what I'm going to go do is grab my tarp and some pruner so we can start removing this sweet potato vine. I always like using a tarp when I have to clean up the garden or, or the bushes or shrubs around the house. This is about a 10 foot by 12 foot heavy duty tarp and it really makes it easy to clean up your gardens and around your house and even in your vegetable garden. And then I also have a good set of pruners here that I'm going to use to, to cut the vines off the sweet potatoes that are in the ground. I also had a nice surprise is when the deer ate all the leaves back 
on these sweet potato vines, I realized that I didn't harvest three of my butternut squash here. And so it was nice being able to see some little hidden treasures there beneath these vines. So what I'm going to do is just pick up some of these vines so I can move the tarp a little closer to the garden bed. Now you can also grow these sweet potatoes up at a vertical trellis too to save garden space. I think that's something I'm going to try doing next year because you really do need at least another six feet or more beyond your your raised beds in order for these vines to spread out. I'm amazed at how thick these vines really are. I have my fountain there and you can see that they grew up over my little display of logs there. But with the leaves off here you can really see up close and see how thick they really get. But in there I have 14 potato slips that have developed some beautiful sweet potatoes in the soil. So let's try and remove these and cut them back and put them all on the tarp. So I'm just going to spread out this tarp here. Now that I have some room and it's a little windy out so I'm going to put a, a brick on the corners here. Try to hold it down. I mean, you can see you can just kind of pick these up. I also have to take them out around the fountain area here. They really do get into everything. And so I'm going to work a little bit more on getting getting these. We're removing these potato vines. I also went and grabbed my Sierra saw. This little handy fold-up saw that I use. And I think that's actually going to be easier to use this. What I'm going to do is where each slip is planted in the ground, I'm going to go right around the, each plant and cut the vines in order so I can remove these vines. And it seems a lot quicker and more efficient just to use this little saw and cut the vines out. And so I have seven plants here that I have to go through and cut these out before I can start remove them, removing them. And so I went through and cut around each plant. I cut the vine out and so let's just pick this up and put it on the tarp. Even the vine, it's really, it's really a dense, dense, heavy vine. And so now we can get a little closer look at the, uh, the sweet potatoes in the ground here. So along here is where each of these potato slips were planted. And then hopefully below the soil here uh, we'll find our red jersey potatoes. Now, I did a video a month ago on early season harvesting of my Beauregard potatoes and they those potatoes were along the top of the surface of the soil and so you can actually see them and so I'm really not sure what we're going to find once we start digging out these red jersey sweet potatoes. So I have these sweet potatoes slips growing in my composted leaf mulch that's amended with topsoil. Now I have a garden fork here that, that I might use. I have a little hand trowel here and also another hand trowel here. And you want to start about 8 to 10 inches or maybe even a little bit more uh, away from your plant so you don't uh, scratch or harm your potatoes. And so since my soil is pretty loose I'm just going to start here with my fingers and kind of see where the potatoes might be. And I'm not even really sure what size these red jersey potatoes are going to be. 
Let me push all the topsoil or compost away from me to the other side. I can see a few of these potatoes starting to surface. It's kind of like digging for gold. Like I can see one right there. There's a nice sweet potato. But anyhow, let me just continue to dig around each one of these. And my hand seems to be working perfectly fine, depending on how loose your soil is. And when you do plant these, you want to keep the soil nice and poor too. You don't want a lot of nitrogen, but you don't want a lot of just greens. You know, you want to use the potassium and uh, phosphorus for your roots, vegetables. And I can start to see these sweet potatoes emerging here. Let's take a little closer look. So what I did is I went around each of the potato slips and cleaned the soil out around them and you can see much better where these Red Jersey sweet potatoes are. So you can see this looks like a beautiful harvest of these Red Jersey sweet potatoes. Bailey enjoys laying on my cushion there, don't you, boy? And this one here on the end looks like a really big potato right here, the second one in from the left. So let's start pulling these out of the ground. I grab my basket and my lawn cart and uh, let's start pulling these out of the ground. And we'll put them in the basket here. Once you have the soil dug around them, they seem pretty easy to pull out. I am curious how much of these are going to weigh. There is a nice size sweet potato. That's going to make a delicious meal. And you know, by the way, the potatoes have been maligned over the years by the industries. You know, they tell you they turn the fat, they turn the sugar, they're not good for you. Well, really, it's the uh, bacon bits and the sour cream and the butter that we put on them that uh, don't make them healthy. Because there's uh, civilizations that have lived off of potatoes. And uh, they're, they're as healthy as can be. Plenty of protein, calcium, a lot of vitamin, different vitamins. There's a nice big potato right there. And so let's continue on here. And so I'm going to be curing these next and then uh, putting them in for storage. I have a few more plants here. And so the sweet potatoes seemed like a, a very easy vegetable to grow. You didn't have to hill them like you do your normal potatoes, your other potatoes. I ended up using mostly my hand to dig these out, but the soil was nice and loose. I also did use this little hand trowel for digging around some of these tubers. I was just digging a little bit deeper on this one to see if I make sure I got everything. But I would say it looks like I got all the sweet potatoes out of that area. And I have a, a big basket full of these Red Jersey sweet potatoes. So now that we have these Red Jersey sweet potatoes harvested 
you know, you want to cure them next. And the idea of curing is, you know, during, during harvesting, you might scratch the skin. These are very delicate, thin skinned potatoes. And so, you know, you want to cure your sweet potatoes for about one to two weeks in a nice, warm, humid place, you know, around 80 degrees. And the idea is that it's going to help heal any scratches or bruises that may have occurred during harvesting. And then also you want to then store your potatoes. Uh, you can store these up to at least three months, but you want to store them in, a, in your basement uh, where it's around 50, 55 degrees in a nice humid place. Uh, some people even wrap each one with, with uh, newspaper or you could line the egg crate with newspaper then put them in there. But you do want to make sure that you have good circulation of, of air around these. Also for harvest time too, you want to, you know, typically when the leaves start to turn a little bit yellow uh, or even before the first frost. Now some people wait to the first light frost and then harvest them, but you know, if these potatoes are near the surface, you know, you got to be careful that they don't get frozen because it could damage them. Uh, or, you know, it takes anywhere from three to four months for these to, to until harvest time or for them to mature. And so the longer you wait, the Again, the larger these are going to get. And you can see this is a nice size uh, sweet potato right here. So why don't we take a minute here and let's just weigh some of these uh, and see what we have. So let's uh, use this table here and uh, we'll measure some of these potatoes. So I have my regular bathroom scale here that I'm going to use. And this basket weighs about a pound. And so let's just put this on here. It's showing it weighs a little bit over 20 pounds. So let's take a closer look. And so a little over 20 pounds, I would say, you know, minus the basket, we have 19 to 20 pounds of sweet potatoes. So let's measure or weigh. Let's see how much one of those big potatoes weigh. So let's remove this. When I bought this little scale, I really should have bought a bathroom scale. This one only can weigh up to, to 11 pounds. So if you're looking to buy a scale to weigh vegetables, buy a bathroom scale. And so we're going to try weighing this big uh, potato right here. You can see how big that is. It probably weighs about a pound, maybe a little bit less. Actually, it weighs 2.6 pounds, that one potato. Let's take a closer look. So you can see there we have 2 pounds, 6 ounces from one Red Jersey sweet potato. So anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden harvesting these beautiful Red Jersey sweet potatoes. It has been a, a, a fun growing these out in the garden. It's the first time, like I said, I had, had done these. And so, uh, so there you go. You have 20 pounds of potatoes for around $1.50. I had about seven slips in the, or eight slips in the garden, and they were 15 cents a piece. So, you know, eight times 15 is dollar twenty. You know, round it off to a dollar fifty. You're paying for 20 pounds of sweet potatoes. I will be harvesting my Bure Regard sweet potatoes, and I also have some yams in the other half of that same raised garden bed. So I'm curious about how much, how many uh, potatoes and the weight of them that we'll get from that harvest. So anyhow, if you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the section below. And also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so so you can receive future videos. And you can also visit us at PlantSmartLiving.com. Anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.